A new laser cutter showed up in the shop today. It's the Creality Falcon 2 Pro diode laser cutter. This is the 22 watt model, which currently retails for around $1,500. The working area is 400 by 415 millimeters. But the most notable thing about this laser cutter, in my opinion, is that it's a covered unit. Hey. So. So. What were, what were your first impressions of this machine? First, uh, first impressions is that the box was heavier than the last one. <laughs> okay. Which makes sense because it's twice as big. For me, my first impression was it was a lot more assembly than the other Creality machines we've done. That's well, the part that we've had before, though, was the same amount of assembly. Yeah. The, the, the open frame, all you had to do was pop the head on, plug in the connectors, and it was ready to go. Right. But the built-in enclosure um, came as very flimsy sheets of acrylic that were kind of a pain to get into the tracks. Yeah. Um, but once we got them in, they're pretty good. And I personally think the fact that it makes it a closed frame unit uh, is well worth the assembly. Yeah. Any other first impressions? No. Not really. Not really. Other than that... Oh, I also noticed, like... There's like a couple little niceties that elevate this above other dial laser cutters. Like it has the camera and it has, it's lit on the inside too. Yeah. Yeah. It's it has like, a light burn camera on the lid and it has an LED strip along the front. And it uh, seems as though they uh, automatically turn on when you're running the machine. Yeah. Like little niceties that do in fact. It also has a built in it. vent fan so that you can easily vent it out. Should we give it a go? Let's do it! Okay, we're gonna start by cutting a living hinge bow out of eighth inch thick plywood. To focus this, you just slide the little piece under the laser head and then plop the laser head on top of it and then tighten it into place. This living hinge bow is a really good first test cut to put it through the paces because it's kind of an intricate cut, so we'll be able to really see how the laser handles it. Um, plus, it, it has a lot of cuts, so it should it make a lot of smoke, so we can really see how this cover works, too. Uh, we pulled it back during the cut, which is not something I would advise doing, but for the sake of science, we wanted to see, and, and it did, in fact, really contain the smoke, and the exhaust fan could suck it out and get it outside. Let's try again. All this being said, the settings for our first cut were not quite right, and it didn't go all the way through. It was originally at a 10-speed 100 power, and we cranked it down to a 5-speed 100 power for this second cut and it got through the plywood really, really cleanly. Okay, up next we're cutting a coaster set out of half inch thick plywood. Plus this design has an engrave over the top. So we'll be able to see how it handles engraves and also the thicker plywood. Um, I kept it at a hundred power and just did four passes to make sure it would get through. Um, and it did really cleanly actually. I could have gotten away with three passes probably, possibly even two, but you know, and the engrave looked really, really great too. So that was pretty impressive because half inch thick plywood can sometimes be a pain to cut. All right, time for some final thoughts on the machine in the form of a pros and cons list. We'll start with the pros. Built-in enclosure. Yeah, second is the built-in exhaust fan. And I found, I feel like the smoke, it really did a great job at containing. It like, did. Like no notes. It was awesome. Um, and it was also automatic. Uh, when you turn on the machine, it automatically turned that on. There was some assembly, but it was really easy assembly. It wasn't frustrating or anything like that for the most part. It was well, it's well engineered and they were very thoughtful in what they had you do in order to balance out the shipping costs versus the functionality of the machine. Yeah. I, I thought all the Creality machines that we've used, I'm pretty sure that you can just swap out the heads. And so if you start with the 22 watt, you can later add the 40 watt head and just upgrade the machine, only replacing one part and not needing to do any additional assembly. I think that that's kind of a big pro too. I think so too. Yeah. All right. Um, another pro is the built-in knife table. You don't need to deal with a honeycomb on this. And I actually found the solution of just those little like dowel things to be kind of clever. It really gets the job done in a really simple way, which I like. Um, and then the last thing is the debris drawer. I feel like when I look at this machine, the thing that obviously drew my attention at first was the enclosure over the top. But the debris drawer on the bottom, super nice perk. 
it really elevates the machine a lot, I think. I also will add that the camera is nice once you get it sorted out, as is the LED light, mm -hmm. for sure. The fact that you can actually see what's going on in the laser, um, the fact that the enclosure is fully transparent, it doesn't have any um, you know, solid opaque areas, so you can really see what's happening in the machine while it's running. Yeah, the biggest and like the final pro, I think, on this one is value. I feel like you're definitely paying more for the pro model of the Falcon laser cutter, but it's not that much more, I think, if you look at everything additional that you get for it. They really loaded the features in. All right, now the cons. We're, we still had issues, and it's not unique to this machine, uh, we, but we still had issues with the... F with the uh, Laser. The framing light. Yeah. Um, supposedly it has the ability to do it, um, but it says you just like, hit the frame button when it's in standby and then switches into it. It wasn't working for me. Yeah, so. Um, so it, it was still <laughs> difficult to line up the pieces, but I don't, in fairness, know if that is user error on my part or a fault of the machine. Um, and I also don't know if it's a light burn setting that I need to figure out to get yeah. it to kick on or something like that. And actually, in reality, it has nothing to do with reality, to be fair. All right. <laughs> um, the camera was hard to calibrate, but that was also a light burn issue. Because okay. I, it was hard to calibrate because the light burn software kept telling me that it wasn't picking up the image yeah. quite right. So it was just very finicky. Um, Again, not a reality issue, but it was an issue we ran into with this machine to allow a lot of time to calibrate the camera. The advantage there is that once you finally get it calibrated, in theory, it is calibrated until you switch out your computer. And then the last con that I think I have for this one is just the focus method. I feel like every other element of this machine is so well designed and thoughtfully designed that like the focus method feels a little bit it's not even that clumsy, but it's just a tiny little piece that's easy to lose. I feel like there's got to be a simpler solution to that part of it. Well, I, I personally prefer the ones where it has a little pin that like drops out from the head and then you go down to it and then fold it back up. Yeah. Nothing to lose, um, but that's a matter of preference. We're doing star ratings. I give this one, honestly, I give this one probably a full five stars. Full five? Um, yeah, they, they solve the open frame issue. Um, the solution is way more elegant than a tent. I think that the value for the money is there. Um, I, give this one, I give this one a full five as long as you pick the proper wattage for the projects that you're doing. I'm going to go like 4.95. Just because of the focusing method. <laughs> Which averages out to a full five. Hey! But I just kind of feel like, I don't know. It is, I really, really do think even with that being said about the focusing method, because of the price point and everything you get for that price point, like no notes kind of two at the same time. You know what I mean? All right. That's All it. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.